and it's not great, but we look a lot alike. <laughs> Brunch! Hit it, boys! Boy, are my arms tired. We got a late night. We, uh, late night recording. We uh, are very late night. We uh, we do this. Why do the Oscars end so late? It's like soccer. Why do they play it so early in the morning? <laughs> Why do they do the Oscars so late at night? I think we've already run out of jokes about how late the Oscars run. Jimmy Kimmel, that was literally was all he done did. Done with that three minutes into <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, like the first couple were okay. But you got to consider, he is clearly tying a hand behind his back when he's up there. He's like, I'm not going to actually go for it here. I'm going to keep this job and no one's going to get mad at me. I think the, like the most offensive thing he said was that like Nicole Kidman works for AMC or something. That was yeah. a very, very uh, polite night. For the most it, part, it yeah. Without incident. Was I mean, there they... anything that made you say damn other than... Uh, everybody from everything, everywhere, all at once, just like never shouting out Stephanie Shu. Yeah, that was pretty tough. <laughs> I don't know what she did on that on that set, um, but no, I think that the uh, there were a lot of James Cameron jabs, which I was totally on yeah. board with. Uh, love James Cameron not showing up because he's too fucking big for the Oscars. Apparently, what a dickhead. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I liked the the line about. Uh, we found something that's too like we finally found something that's too long for James Cameron. Yeah. Uh, big night for everything, everywhere, all at once, as predicted. Really, the night was kind of chalky. Yeah, man. Um, I know there was the stretch there where uh, All Quiet on the Western Front started uh, cleaning up on technical categories, and we were asking ourselves, we were watching it, we were like, "Is this really like a signifier that?" It's picking up steam, or is this the part where it wins? Because it's not even going to be nominated for the categories that would really make you think, oh, shoot, it's going to do it. Like when Parasite happened, we were like, oh, man, best director. It's definitely going to win now. Like All Quiet on the Western Front really wasn't even nominated for the Big East. But it was cool that All Quiet on the Western Front had its little uh, like had uh, its moment. interlude. Yeah. yeah. It was it... like verse and chorus was everything, everywhere, all at once. <laughs> Bridge was All Quiet on the Western Front, and they were like, all right, now, let's say we do a double chorus of everything, everywhere, all at once, and take this puppy home. Yeah, like, in hindsight, Jamie Lee Curtis winning um, uh, Best Supporting Actress should have been, like, the end of the night. We should have just called it there and been like, all right, well, we know that this is going to happen, because that's, like, the weakest category, and it's somehow won even in that one. Yeah. Um, in terms of, like, uh, where it could have won, I think Jamie Lee Curtis was, like, the weakest nomination of everything everywhere all at once and it's still one for that one but uh, you know when when all quiet started to win and like i looked at you and i was like maybe but i think it was like wishful thinking that like there would be some excitement i i, th I think yeah i i, I think that you were either looking for a storyline or also yeah. like pushing my buttons because I like <laughs> I put my reputation on the line. Yeah. I was really especially today I was like really leaning into like no people don't touch all don't, quiet on the west yeah. front it's not going to fucking win and I kept using that fucking stat which what if somebody double checked that stat and was like Oh no! Like two years ago, one that'd be did real that. tough for you. No, yeah, I, I, I did double check it, which I mean, it. it took I did a while. see a bunch of people saying Argo, and then you were like, "I got gotcha you there." No, <laughs> yeah, Argo was nominated for best uh, supporting actor. Which now, just to provide context, we'll say for a million times, the stat is that uh, no movie not nominated for best director or an acting award has won best picture since the categories have looked the way that they do now, which is 1937. So uh, there, there, there was a pretty big indication that All Quiet on the Western Front and Top Gun and Women Talking for multiple reasons and Avatar for multiple reasons uh, were not, not going to win. win. But uh, going into today, uh, this, it's, we're, it's Monday morning, I guess, but going into Sunday, All Quiet on the Western Front did have the second best betting odds. So I think that anybody who is like, you know what, I'm going to take a long shot I'll just take the movie with the second best betting odds, and it's plus a thousand. That seems like a safe way to do a long shot. I was very against that. Uh, we were both pushing. Hey, if you want to take a swing, do it with uh, Banshees of Inisherin. Uh, I also didn't hate zero Tar wins or Failmans, and 
as I mean, this is why we do these podcasts. This is why we talk about everything and yeah. try to leave no stone unturned. We talked about on I think it was the mini episode of Banshees, the possibility of like, is this gonna be the movie that gets a bunch of nominations and doesn't really win anything because we were looking through the categories and it's like, okay, it's not going to win best actor. It's probably not going to win best director. It should win best supporting actress, but I don't know. That's a pretty close race. According to people, right? We didn't get it. Uh, original screenplay. We both thought it should win, but it, there were other candidates there and it doesn't end up winning original screenplay, which is the I think the one on which you and I both like locked in. We said like, hey, like that's the one it's going to win. We also thought Condon, but I think that rightfully we would we had our doubts about whether she would actually win. The big moment, though, as you said, like of the night came right in the beginning when Jamie Lee Curtis wins Best Supporting Actress. She had won the SAG Award, so she was the favorite to win going into today. I don't know about you, I think I do, but like. I didn't see that happening at all. No. I was like, I, I just didn't see it for I tonight. was surprised when she got nominated. Yeah, oh yes. Like, like, from the very beginning, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you go back and, and check the tape, we have like reactions to Oscar nominations. And I was I think we both were very surprised that she cool. even got nominated. It's like cons- happy for her. Considering her role in that movie, it was pretty small. And uh what is it, Stephanie Shoe. S- Stephanie Shoe, uh like stronger supporting case than Jamie Lee Curtis in that, in her own movie. Definitely. Like that is a, that's a, that was a, sh- that was a stunner, but I think it was the only real stunner of the night. Yeah. Uh, no, there was a stunner. I, I got some pushback when I said the Lady Gaga song is bad. So that was a stunner to me that some people were like, hear me out. That's a great song. Um, yeah, you said it a few minutes ago, though, that Jamie Lee Curtis, of all the wonderful representatives that were there for everything all at once, was the weakest of all of them. And it doesn't mean that Jamie Lee Curtis was bad in that movie. No, definitely just, wasn't. But, but like, like, whenever, when you you were watching that movie, did you think this is this should win an Oscar? Right. It's like it's inappropriate. It I was guess. a it was a fun little treat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I don't want to say that it was bad because it definitely wasn't. But she wasn't bad. Like the the role wasn't bad. I love Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. It's just like and people were saying like, oh, this is her legacy award, and it's like, do we need to give Jamie Lee Curtis? I a saw legacy? Ken Jack uh, tweet that too, and I was like, good point. Yeah. And like of all the people that you could give legacy <laughs> awards to, like. Jamie the Curtis has probably done more things than Angela Bassett, but like if we're just doing like an overall like who's as good, like everybody fucking thinks Angela Bassett is like the best. I don't think that anybody's ever like Jamie Lee Curtis, the best. I think they're like Jamie Lee Curtis, you rock. Yeah. I don't know if you rock necessarily gets a legacy award, especially from a show that famously doesn't always give a fuck about legacies. There's yeah, a, for there's sure. There's a lady who uh, didn't make it to the show tonight named Glenn Close. And <laughs> it was true. because she was under the weather. It was because she was sick. Unfortunately, she has COVID. But I saw it was like, uh, Glenn Close will not be attending the awards tonight because she has COVID. And I was like, yo, Glenn Close, why were you attending the awards anyway? Like, you don't owe those people anything. They don't love you. Like, Draymond Green voice. They don't love you like that. <laughs> like, just... Back off. Also, like to the Jamie Lee Curtis point, uh, I think that if you have like um, a a yogurt spokes, like a fiber yogurt spokesperson stage of your career, you're not owed a legacy Oscar at any point. That's Kurt Warner getting into the Football Hall of Fame when he had to be Eli Manning's backup to continue his career. Like he had that little part of his career where like they're like, yo, we got this kid. We're all pretty sure. He ain't that good. But we need you to show him the ropes. Can you do it? I don't know. I don't think so. I haven't been good at football in a while. Whatever. Do this for a year. Uh, I forgot that existed. Happy for her, though. I mean, there was a shot of all the everything everywhere all at once crew just sitting there. And I mean, I couldn't identify with it because it was so like the fuck. They, they were just the winning team. Yeah. They're like that table. I know that they were all just like seated, but it was like that table, invisible table was like the winner's table. That after party had to be They were shooting them crazy. differently. They were like, they, there was like a different filter on them. They were in 4K. Everybody else being shot on iPhones. They were like, these are the real actors. And you, 
you poor people. And Tom Cruise is like, I'm not. He I'm wasn't not there. Poor. He wasn't there. He was not there. Uh, was Jerry Bruckheimer there? I don't I, know. I want to see like some of those guys get on stage. The, the old Kraken, crew. Kraken may have had a game. Is Bruckheimer a part owner? Seattle really? Kraken, yeah. Wow, this confirms I'm getting a. I want to get a a white Kraken jersey mainly because the there was a picture of their mascot wearing one, and it's not great, but we look a lot alike. <laughs> and I was able to see how that jersey would look on me, and I was like, yeah, that does work. <laughs> So I'm planning Also on... had the big ass red boots. Yes, and he had the big ass red boots. Shoots. And I was like, those are kind of like my podcast shoes. Like it was like very much, it was uh you've seen Clueless, right? Mm -hmm. The like outfit generator thing mm -hmm. to see what it would look like. That's kind That's of you, pal. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. I, I want to follow that guy just to see if he like wears different fits. Uh do you think that uh there's any sort of uh animosity from Stephanie Shu at the Oscars uh, after party with that whole group who all have Oscars and now none of them shouted her out in their speeches. I can't. Who is it? Kiwi Kwan who like yeah. ran through like the entire like he cast. Said to, he said uh, to uh, Michelle, Jamie, and uh, that's it. No, none for Gretchen Wieners. <laughs> yes. Bye. I mean, if he had shouted out Jenny Slate, then we would for sure know that something was amiss. But Stephanie Shu. Uh, sorry, we're tired and we've been drinking uh, soda all all night to get did through. Did do a lot of uh, did do a lot of sugar. I was very excited when I opened the fridge and saw Coca Cola in there, like been off the beer. So I was like, man, you know, it'd be very healthy right now. I can't tell you the last time that I bought like a twelve pack of Coca Cola, but knowing that it was going to be a long award show, the Jimmy Kimmel voice, uh, I bought. A soda instead of beer because I didn't want to be drunk at the end of it, and I got a bunch of candy. I would be so fun if I had one beer, and I did. I, I had one non-alcoholic beer. Uh, shout out Heineken uh, as we were watching the Oscars. So I had two cans of Coca Cola, one Heineken Zero, <laughs> and uh, some popcorners. Oreos. <laughs> you did like really run the pie. You had the cycle <laughs> going. Uh, pie. The we needed we needed the the sugar to to up our energy level because uh, I mean last year we did the the post Oscar show and we were just running off adrenaline because <laughs> that was is everyone going to jail? Wildest thing that's ever Are they ever been on TV. So a uh, very tame show. We needed uh we needed some PEDs. I would have, but for real, if I had like two real beers during the Oscars, I'd be so sleepy right now. Yeah. Kiwi Kwan's speech though, he didn't thank uh he didn't thank Stephanie Shu. I don't know if Jamie Lee Curtis did because I was just my my jaw was on the floor and I was so Yeah, stunned. I don't I don't recall either, but I feel like she would have had to being nominated in the same category as her. Yeah. Hopefully. I mean, she should have shouted out everybody because let me tell you, Angela Bassett and Kerry Condon. Uh, we, they, yeah, we haven't even talked about the reactions. Yes. Yeah. They continued to show their emotions. They, they, they wore their hearts on their sleeves. Uh, Angela Bassett, I didn't think would ever be able to top Master of None for expressing disapproval. But man, when they said... That, that, that you showed me the shot of all of them as yeah, it was being announced. Four of them, five of them. And, I mean, Stephanie Hsu, God bless her, we're Team Steph, was going crazy. She well, was yeah, so she, happy. Supporting her teammate. Yeah. Uh, Carrie Condon was just like, seemed just like very genuine, like, shocked. Oh, Jesus. Didn't think it would be that. Yeah, uh, she had, she had the, the reaction that I would assume most of us did was, oh, really? And then you could, you, like I, thought I thought that was the I most. I might lose to Angela, but yeah. like. I thought that was the most fascinating reaction. Everybody's talking about Angela Bassett being like stone faced because she didn't even think about moving a muscle once that was announced. Yeah. But Carrie Condon, I thought, was the most fascinating because she had a genuine reaction of shock that Jamie Lee Curtis won. And then you see her catch herself and be like, oh, shit, camera's on me. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, I think... Which I think is fine. Yeah, I think you could be a lovely person and also just genuinely in that moment be like, I was planning for either winning or losing to this other great actor. And 
I just simply hadn't considered this other possibility. <laughs> yeah. So, and I'm sure there's some pain of like, I'd talked myself into why you would be okay if I lost to Angela and maybe she watched Wakanda forever a thousand times and like psyched yourself up and became like an even bigger Angela Bassett fan than she probably was before. And then it's just like, oh no, 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 none of that's Jamie Lee Curtis. And you're like, so you're just going to give it to anybody then? Why not me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm never going to be like, I'm never going to be one of those people that criticizes somebody for being disappointed uh, in, in that situation or like being surprised even. Um, but uh, do you think that either one of them was, like, disrespectful? No. I think that... I mean, I think that Angela Bassett was mad. You can... I think you can make a case Angela Bassett was kind of disrespectful. I, just in terms of, like... But she thought it was her moment. I mean, and she yeah, could have been right, a lot uh, more disrespectful. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, could have walked up on stage and slapped say, the shit like, out of her. There is precedent at yes. this uh, board. She, she did not react with violence. I know. I think her face to me just said, like, okay. It I was, remember that. Yeah, it, it was like, um, it was definitely like a, okay, it's like that. Kind yeah, of, right, kind exactly. Of thing, it's yeah. like, hmm, all right. I'm going to be taking I, this name down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's not the same because this guy wasn't even nominated, but it's like Ben Affleck with Argo being like, so you liked the movie, huh? <laughs> Just wasn't well directed. <laughs> It is wild now. Why to, is that wild to win Best Picture without a nomination for director? And that that's why I said that like Argo, Argo is the closest to in that stat to being the outlier because m most of those other movies were nominated for Best Director. It's you ha like it's it's a hand in hand kind how, of thing. Yeah, how can you think that something was the best picture and not even consider its direction? Yeah, and, and, it's okay. like. It's like giving an award to like a, a like a, a NASCAR car and, and ignoring the driver. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, the loser uh, of um, this is a better way to phrase that. Um, <laughs> Michelle Yeoh wins Best Actress, which that was kind of a toss up between her and Kate Blanchett. And forever we we're all. We were Team Blanchett, but I was never not Team Blanchett. Even in the end, when I thought that Michelle Yeoh would win, uh, I, both of them were outrageously deserving. I will say, Blanchett, while we didn't get to hear from her, yeah, she gets like my best dressed for the night. She was wearing like a like a like a blanket. Yeah, she had like a like a, a top part. Was it a dress? It was like the top part was a dress it, and the bottom part. It was very like the top part was like a blanket and the bottom part was a dress. It was very like if brunch had an unlimited budget, I would like I'd be podcasting and stuff like that. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's like it was just like subscribe a, to the Patreon, everybody. Patreon.com slash listen to brunch. Also, we were talking about what watching the red carpet show, which was terrible, by the way. Yeah, just really a, bad. an absolute Fuck. abomination of a red carpet show. And we were talking about how we could do this so much better than what they're doing. Now, like now, I think we're proving that wrong because we're like, oh, what was she wearing? Like, what was a, she a, wearing? A I don't blanket know. up top. Of she was in tar. That's what really matters. <laughs> yeah. It's called, it's called barstool movies, not <laughs> barstool clothes. <laughs> um, I no, I was just a little bit disappointed I, that that Kate Blanchett didn't win because I just think the Lydia Tar character is is incredible and. Lydia Tarr has certainly like taken on a life of her own. She's, get, she's in, in like the post post uh, Tarr release era, and I wanted that to pick up steam. Like I wanted the legacy of Lydia Tarr to to rise. You want to see some Lydia Tarr deep fakes? Yes. No, I want to see like a Lydia Tarr like mini series now, or like a spin off Ooh. TV show. That'd be amazing. You know, who, she's just a great character. Awesome character. She she should live in infamy. You know who had a great night, though, was this um, Jamie Lee Curtis. Not only did she win Best Supporting Actress, it was, uh, there was a new Your Honor. <laughs> That's right. Knew that what that was a night. She was just, they cut to that cool kid's table, and she's just like. She's, wa she's on watching on her phone. World. <laughs> she's watching Your Honor on her phone at the table. Oh, we should do a shit post. Uh, it's like uh, Jamie Lee Curtis was watching Your Honor on her phone when uh, she when her win was we, announced. Uh, I'm I'm a, I'm against AI and like deep fakes, but yeah. it'd be very funny to have like uh, Jamie Lee Curtis accepting her 
her Oscar and she just like shouts out or like recites the plot of Your Honor. <laughs> like her, she spends her entire acceptance speech yeah. like uh, uh, divulging into uh, into Your Honor conspiracy theories. We post like, did I hear this right? And she thanks uh, Michael Desiato <laughs> and Charlie. What's his name? What's Charlie's? Oh, uh, fuck. I forget it. It's a very mayoral name. Yeah. It's a very mayoral Shit, name. I forget. Uh, um, no, but it, I, I would want it to be like, so, so you're telling me Michael went to jail for tax evasion? Yes. <laughs> Rocco, new Rocco, Fia. <laughs> uh, we do have to, I think, issue a correction because we haven't spoke about it on yeah. the podcast. Some light junkage we, last we, week. We, uh, we really did chunk the um, the tax evasion thing. We didn't realize that like early in, in I think episode one of season two they kind of went over that in detail and then as soon as somebody pointed like re- re- recalled a, a scene we were like oh yeah that did happen. Like, That's what that was for. Yeah. It was like a thing I, it, to be you, fair, your honor is a big um like on your phone show. Yeah, you feel stupid though when you know exactly what the person's talking about. Yes. When they're like, when this, it'd be, it would feel better if I was like, what? When did that happen? Yeah. And then I could. It's be the like, entire purpose that Rosie something. Perez is in the picture yeah. with like a rivalry against Costello. My, I just chose to not retain it, and then talk to you who had also chosen to <laughs> yeah. not retain it and we just and we're just flabbergasted not only do we not remember line. we were flabbergasted by the idea that he didn't go to jail for we're the- like you know what cancel the fucking show <laughs> <laughs> doesn't make any sense so uh shout out to the uh many uh polite and sometimes impolite uh bruntouchables who reached out and were like uh this is indeed what happened uh other best rests by the way Monica Barbero from uh, Top Gun Maverick. Oh, my goodness. Plays Phoenix. Phoenix. Uh, Got it going on. Shaquille O'Neal voice. Was not familiar with your game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she looked outstanding. Incredible. Like, man, just like reinvented the gown. Got to give a shout out to my girl, uh, Jessica Chastain. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Throwing a hundred. And she... She lives for uh, like award shows. It always looks incredible. I I've said this like I think several times. I think once a year at least. Just the most like underrated hot person in Hollywood. I nobody I, talks about her. I don't think I see anybody like being like ooga ooga. But that's even thing. when she's on. But we've never been like that, with the exception of. But people on the internet are, and people don't do that with Jessica Chastain. Yeah, true. Should we start doing? Should we start objectifying uh, Jessica Chastain on online to in her honor? Yes. No, I don't think we'll do that. <laughs> um, she looked phenomenal, though. Uh, t- not just because uh, we're biased, but I thought that Hong Chao's look was yes. awesome. And man, Brennan Fraser shouted her out. Yes, the, I mean the, the the cast of Everything Everywhere All at Once could uh, take a lesson from that that kind of. <laughs> camaraderie but uh he shouted her out and she gave the that's like this is the best part of award shows when a co-star or a wife or a husband or a partner or a child gets shouted out the acknowledgement back you know they're like "Mm." yeah or the case of like jamie lee curtis she like waves him off because she's looking at something on her phone (laughs) yes she's like hold on they're about to close the deal with uh those other gangsters it was a pretty underwhelming night for speeches um like no no, like super notable speeches even like the ones that we were looking forward to i didn't think were that great like kiwi kwan's was awesome yeah um like brendan frazier's i thought was pretty underwhelming he got a little lost but he was i mean i I think we lost under the sea yes Extremely nautical speech. The most was, nautical speech I've ever heard in my he life. He was really feeling that Little Mermaid trailer earlier yes. in the show. Big he time. was like, I am scrapping my entire speech. We're going with a nautical theme. He got up there and he was like, wow, look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? Wouldn't you think I'm the girl? <laughs> the girl who has everything. He said, James Cameron can't be here tonight, but I will show you the way of water. I did see um, there were a lot of people in replies comparing it to the 
vows in Wedding Crashers when he like, says, like, you're my first mate, my captain. Like, that, that's where that speech was going. Yeah. But uh, in Brendan Fraser's defense, we were all expecting him to be super emotional. And he was. And I just think that maybe we only allowed for one type of being emotional. Like, sometimes you're overcome with emotion and you're kind of all over the place. Yeah. That's typically what it does for me. I'm not the biggest crier. I'm more likely to just like start saying under the sea a million times. <laughs> yeah, but here's, what he did. The, here's the thing. Like we've seen Brendan Fraser hit the other kind of emotion oh, yeah. every at every sta- step of the way and every Good. stage. Good that. He he may have just been all cried out at this point. <laughs> you think that he was depleted? He could have been. You think that he was out? Man, he was like, I don't got any water left, so I'm just gonna talk about water the entire time. He's like, Damn, yes. <laughs> He's like, uh, Key, what's your secret? You keep crying. How come I, I haven't been able to? I love the, I love those two relationship. Uh, they obviously they they referenced Encino Man having worked together. I'd also never seen that before. Famously, we had never seen Ki Hui Kwan in anything before Everything Everywhere All at Once, and he. Uh, just became the most important person in our lives because that's how pop culture works. But, man, it was great to see both of those guys win. Everything Everywhere All at Once won three of the four acting awards. Crazy. Bonkers. And then Best Director. And then, how many awards did it win in total? Seven. Seven Seven of 11. That is not too shabby. Screenplay, got uh, directing. And part it's really seven of ten categories for which it was nominated because... Two, oh, right, because uh, you were automatically were losing in one of them. Right, so it couldn't technically have a perfect night. Yeah, but, damn. So it won in seven of the ten categories. That's crazy. Deserved in actress, deserved in supporting actor, so for sure. So here's what, like, I, I was bummed that Banshees got shut out, but, like, the only the only loss there, because I'm pretty sure, like, almost all of them came at the hands of Everything Everywhere All at Once, like, all Banshee's losses. Like, the only one that I can complain about is Best Supporting Actress. It's the only one where you can, like, be like, uh, Everything Everywhere didn't really didn't really need to take that one home. But even if, even if like, Stephanie Hsu had won that one yeah. over Condon, I would have been like, okay, yeah, fine, whatever. And you would have been like... It certainly proved to be everything, everywhere, all at once is yeah night. right. And I feel better about her winning than I would about Jamie Lee Curtis winning. But you didn't quite believe me before that when they were hitting the red carpet. You thought I was making a joke or being a weirdo or something, and I was for sure being a weirdo. But like that look, Jamie Lee Curtis just like looked like someone who was gonna fucking win, and I was already sad. I was like, I actually think that she's gonna win. Yeah, but you said it as like. It's like, like they're gonna rip thing. up the ballots and I know, throw them but away. I, I don't know. Like it, it was just like it, it was now written in the stars, and maybe it had been all along, but I just didn't know until she showed up in that I'm gonna fucking win this award look. And but I mean worked out. Kate Blanchett, yeah, I mean, good for her. Kate Blanchett looked so much better, but didn't have that look of this is mine or uh, Carrie Condon had a winning look, I think. And this isn't like a pretty, not pretty thing. Just like a, what's this? Because they, they, uh, Laverne Cox kept asking them, like, what what statement are you making with this ensemble or this outfit? I actually do kind of listen to the to the outfits and yeah. what, what they're telling me. And, man, bummer. Should have just dressed differently. See, I guess we're, we're coming around on us being able to that host a red carpet thing, man. segment on the red carpet You know thing. what else? So I, I had a point uh, that I raised during the red carpet, that portion, and I said, why is nobody wearing jewelry? Yeah. Nobody's wearing jewelry this year. It was a lot of, um, it was a lot of bare necks, mm-hmm. a lot of uh, bare ears, and just like it seemed like a pretty toned down oscars ceremony like in a lot of areas i think that jennifer conley stole all the jewelry and uh like just taped it to the front of her number there that was a fine that was a nice look yeah it's jennifer, jennifer conley always gonna look jennifer conley uh nobody plays an all-american wife slash girlfriend quite like jennifer conley and has been for like 95 years yes. now yeah. and is just always going to steal hearts. Uh the music. 
you got it. This is a change I need to make. I know that they brought they they did all the awards and everybody was happy about that. Award the best original song before the Oscars. That can be the one that you award before, and you can still have an acceptance speech. Choose who wins. Tell say, hey, we're gonna give the award to this uh, this person. Let them perform, and then they can give their speech at some point. We don't need a song from everybody. And I famously like listening to music quite a bit. That's a way to make it shorter. And let's be real. A lot of the songs that get nominated for Best Original Song stink. So, like, I could have done... I liked the Rihanna one, and I liked... I liked the the one from Everything Everywhere All at Once. But And that only ran for, like, five seconds anyway. Uh, liked Not To, Not To, of course. Yes. But, like, Lady Gaga doing this big, dramatic... Speaking of tone down. Yeah. This, but she made it so dramatic and tried to like build this insanely generic, lame, no offense song into this big number. And I was like, yo, who's in charge here? Who's I know it's Lady Gaga, so she can kind of do whatever she wants, but I just don't know who that was for. You yeah. could have gotten rid of that. And like she did the whole strip down thing, like you like t-shirt and jeans and converse is like and like took off all her makeup. Like she wasn't just on the red carpet, like 14 minutes ago like fully balled out it's just like i don't know it seemed to i mean obviously it seemed performative it was a performative performance mm. um but i disagree with your take on the music thing though but which probably is surprising because i'm not a music guy mm. but i because they're definitely not going to make the award show shorter they're they're they, they take away what the music. They joke about they, if they, they take do. away the music. They're just gonna give. They're gonna give more runway for them to make those like terrible bits, like the cocaine bear thing. And we're just gonna have to sit through those. Yeah, I would rather see the performances. This was a bad year for music. Um, mm-hmm. so the performances were not good, and there wasn't really even anything much to make fun of. But like in a normal year, the songs are either good and like catchy. Or they're they're like there's so much going on that you can make fun of it and it's like becomes Twitter fodder. I just remember when I think it was 2019, uh, Toy Story. What would it have been? Was it Toy Story four, Toy Story five? The one that uh, had Forky. Uh, uh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Randy Newman is up there singing. I don't want. I don't. Uh, I can't let you throw yourself away. Which I, I loved. I thought that was a very fun song and everything. But like. Randy Newman got to schlep his ass up there and I'm watching him. I'm like, he doesn't want to be doing this. Like he's, he's not happy about this. And and Toy Story kids aren't watching this right now. Yeah. I think if there's like a special thing that you want to do, sure. Come on. We had a, we had uh, we don't talk about Bruno last year. That was good. Although it it is funny though. People famously talked about that guy. They talked about Bruno all the time. They sang about him. It is funny when you have like a a song like that, which is like clearly for kids and it's airing at like 1045 PM. Yeah. And Jimmy Kimmel's talking about how he should have been in bed two hours ago. Jimmy Kimmel, man. What's, what do you think the after parties are like right now? Uh, Coke, coked out. I don't even know. I don't know. Do you think they, they all still do Coke? Yeah, it's gonna be pretty sleepy. No, I think they definitely do coke. I, w- I would go to the Banshees after party. Those Irish lads know how to party, but they don't party. That's true. I'd still rather be there. I, I'd, yeah, I'd still rather be there. And and Stone Cold Sober, Colin Farrell is still probably more entertaining and charismatic than anybody on any drug or alcohol. Oh yeah, in the there, world. there is people sitting around a booth and laughing and talking really loudly. Yes, that would be fantastic. Uh, yeah, I do that. But I'm just like thinking of like an after party and Jimmy Kimmel's there. He's just kind of like walking around by himself. And he's like, hey, how, so how long was that? <laughs> oh, is that over yet? I thought we'd never be here at the after party. Uh, All right. Yeah, I, uh, I I would definitely want to be, I don't know, the Banshee's after party or everything everywhere all at once after party. Because the vibes in there have to be sky high. Jamie Lee Curtis is treating everybody to whatever they want. Yes. Like there is, a, there's for sure. Like, Yogurt for everybody. Yes. There's food. There's everything. And God, what, what, what what's partying with Kiwi Kwan like? I, I would, speaking of things that would make me exhausted so fast. The fun thing is uh, no one knows. He never partied. He just hoped and he believed in himself. Like he spent like all this time, this all these years, didn't do anything 
but receive words of encouragement from his wife. <laughs> I love them so much. Uh, any uh, any l- lingering Oscars thoughts? Anything else we should get to? Um, no, I mean that had uh, pretty much everything that I that I wrote down in terms of notes that I wanted to get to. I shout out to Top Gun Maverick. It didn't get shut out. Yeah, got a sound got a sound award. So uh, I was hoping that Top Gun would get something. Yeah, it deserved to. I, I wish it were better represented, and that's literally in that more people were there. But Why, that, was that, Jay Ellis there? Yeah. Why? Why not? What, what's that? Was Jay Ellis there? Yeah, I didn't see Jay him. Ellis I didn't was there. See him. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, but it would have been good to yeah no well that 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 shot of like the Top Gun people, I think it was just like it was Miles, Miles Teller, his and, wife, yeah, and. and uh, mm-hmm. In um, uh, Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Melissa Ber- yeah. Uh, Barrera. Uh, but I don't know. I, just, I, I think it would have been apt if part of this big, like, movie's biggest night was Top Gun regularly getting up there. Because they were such a big part of this last year. And I don't care enough to do the they saved movies thing. But, like, for real, people were talking about going to the movies, and it was for Top Gun. Yeah, like, that was, like, that really did inject some life and excitement back into, like, going to the movies. Yeah. So, uh, I would say, all in all, good Oscars season. Great. uh, Some some real great movies we got to see. We got uh, a lot of Ki Hui Kwan. Hell, yeah. We were disappointed in some ways, but ultimately, we saw movies that we otherwise wouldn't have seen. Triangle of Sadness is now part of our lives. By the way, uh, no Charlby Dean in the Crazy. in memoriam, which John Feidelberg caught. And I was like checking there. I texted. I was like, are you sure? The star like, of a movie nominated for Best Picture who died unceremoniously like right before the movie was released somehow did not get uh, a spot in the in memoriam. For that year's Oscars. It makes me wonder if maybe her family was like, uh, like, we don't just. I don't know. Just, uh, it, it just, it's crazy. So, so surprising. But uh, R.I.P. Charlby Dean, a real one, a legend. Uh, we, we do my Tony Real here. Yeah, you're going to hit it. All right. Uh, we're going to end this episode with a, right? We're going to end this episode with a scream review? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But before we so, do that, I just want to like thank people. If you watched our Oscars stuff, this is the best time of the year for us in terms of the podcast. We put a lot of effort, especially DJ, did yeah. a lot of editing legwork and basically drove himself crazy for uh, like two straight weeks, Yeah, I would say. And this was the biggest we've ever done Oscars season. And I'm very happy with the the strides that we took. So uh, very much appreciate everybody who watched, consumed, gave feedback, all that good stuff. A lot of signups for the Patreon. So thank you very much to everybody who signed up for the Patreon as part of like this cycle. And uh, yeah. it's it's always like my I get so excited for Oscar season primarily because of doing this. And like hearing from everybody, I you you said it way better than I could. Uh, appreciate everybody who was there for it, and stay on the Patreon, not just because we want you to stay on the Patreon, but so we can do more things like this. Obviously, it was super time consuming, but feeling like there was an audience for it, and having like hard proof that people were checking it out and interacting with it made it great because we want to see all these movies anyway and we want to talk about all these movies and uh it's it, it benefits everybody so uh, appreciate everybody for checking all that out and hopefully next year we'll be able to even add more things we're way more capable and better set up to do this sort of stuff now than we were last year next year who knows maybe even more so so stick with us we're going to keep doing more movie stuff and i suppose that's where the scream six thing comes in so uh, we'll probably just cut now to essentially what'll be a standalone scream six review that we'll also throw up on youtube uh appreciate you tata put some on your head let's talk scream six it is the sixth installment of the beloved slasher series it picks up where Scream 2022 left off the first Scream movie without Nev Campbell, and it basically takes the survivors of that 2022 Scream, places them in college, making it the first movie, 
of this franchise set in New York City. It has a 75 on Rotten Tomatoes and a runtime of two hours and three minutes. I'll say off top, I am a scream head. Love all these movies very dearly. I consider this a lower tier scream movie. I'm so disappointed that like you also didn't like this movie because a lot of people like this movie. It has a you, high audience score. Yeah, and you uh you are the scream head of this podcast. I like Scream. I'm not totally uh I guess I'm not totally like in the Scream world as much as you are. I thought this movie was bad. Yeah, and uh, to say I didn't like it might be a stretch because I was still like watching Scream stuff, but I and, and there are a lot of bad movies that I like. I though maybe yeah, I didn't have a good time watching this. You I said was, you said you texted me and said that you did. You were like I still had fun. Oh, but yeah, I was well, like I mean like I didn't have a bad time, but I also was like, oh. Mm. Yeah, here's my issue with it, and we're going to discuss this without spoiler. Uh, this movie, as I said, it doesn't have Sidney Prescott. It does have Gail Weathers. It brings back Kirby from Scream 4, which I liked a lot because Scream 4, I thought was a really, really fun, ridiculous movie. Very good. One of my favorites yes. of the Scream series. Uh, but this relies heavily on those other kids, Sam, uh, Tara, Chad, the whole gang. Um, and my issue with it is this movie makes a very big deal of the Richie character from the previous one, one of the killers yeah, in Scream 5. And it really is dependent on you caring about the killer from the previous one. And no other Scream movie has dwelled so much on a previous movie's killer. And Scream 2's killer was the Scream 1 killer's mom. And it still like wasn't that heavy on the whole time them being like, Billy, 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 Billy. And then at the end, it's like, oh, it's Billy's mom. And so I guess it does contain Scream 2 spoilers, but if you haven't seen Scream 2, I don't, I don't want to know you. Uh, this, everything, and I'm not saying like uh, the end or anything like that, but I'm saying throughout the movie, so much of it is... What went wrong with Richie? What happened to Richie? Did Sam, Richie's ex-girlfriend who kills Richie, did Sam do Richie dirty? People look at Sam this way because of Richie stuff. And I was like, I haven't thought about Richie once yeah, since that same, fucking movie dude. ended, man. Same. Like, I had that same reaction. I was like, why, the, why are we spending so much time on Richie? Like, I understand... Like, the impact that Ghostface has on these people and stuff. But, like, there were two Ghostfaces yeah. in the last one. But all anybody cares about is fucking Richie. And I felt like this one, too, they shoehorned people in. They shoehorned, shoehorned a lot of stuff in for the sake of just shoe, shoehorning them in. Gale, uh, Kirby. I know, like, Kirby serves the plot. Um, and more than I thought she would. Right. Same. Um, but they also shoehorn in like even New York city. Like it felt like they just made a change just for the sake of change, but the without York, it being meaningful change. New York city plays such a smaller role that in this than I thought it would. And so yeah. much of the, uh, the rollout and the promotion of this film was, they're in New York now. And I was like, oh, shit, that's cool. I didn't think, like, I wonder what they're going to do in New York. And it's a good thing I didn't because I would have been disappointed. Well, that so that's what that's where There's a lot a of bodega scene. That's, th it. that's where a lot of my disappointment stems from, because like a lot of the trailer was like uh, it's in a new place and it's like a new breed of ghost face. Mm -hmm. And like you see him use the shotgun in the trailer. And so I thought that they were like legitimately going to like rewrite the rules of Scream, which at like a point they talk about it they talk about like this is it, it, it has to reflect like the time in which it's being made and like went early on in the in the scream franchise it was like a slasher and it was goofy and it was meta and um it reflected the the movies of that time this the horror movies of that time and so they like talk about it in this movie but it doesn't really follow that formula it's mm. sort of just like a very basic, like, psychological thriller. One thing I do like about it, though, is this, more so than any of the other Scream movies, I feel like is... I feel like the hunt goes the other way, where in these movies, 
th- it's a bunch of kids getting mowed down by uh, Ghostface. And there's usually two of them, but they're getting mowed down by a couple of ghost faces. We think it's one. It ends up being multiple, mm-hmm. inevitably. This one, it felt, didn't it feel like more? They were being was proactive. Like, they Right. They yeah. were like, we are finding this person. And obviously in like Scream 2, they're trying to figure out like who's doing it. it and was, in all these, they're trying to figure out who's doing it. But this is the most where like they got the police involved and the police, no offense uh, to deputy, the late uh, Deputy Dewey, this cop seems to... Uh, be more on top of his game <laughs> yes he's like very invested and dewey was very invested too like look you guys know what i'm saying about dewey like we, lo- we love him and we we miss him dearly but like dewey wasn't that good he was reluctant yeah dewey, he was like, a reluctant detective dewey, dewey was like he, like, like he was doing all he could well he was also, kind of a he, stupid guy it also i think like the like the fourth or fifth time you get into uh that sort of battle the, yeah. We've probably got a little bit less excitement and enthusiasm to jump back in. He's like, oh, Sid, I think it seems fine. Let's <laughs> yes. just... um, no, and and I, I agree, like they're the motivations of, of the the kids is a, a lot more based in anger than in fear. Mm-hmm. Um and they're just like, What the fuck? We're trying to get past this and this guy won't leave us alone. Um but yeah, I I just thought like the overall like the plot wasn't that interesting. Like the motivations weren't that interesting. The kills weren't even all that interesting. Agree. There were a few interesting kills, but nothing like nothing like super fun or yeah. uh, or like different. Um, it was it just felt like a lot of rehashing just for the purpose of doing it, running it back. I I on the way home. I was thinking about like where where I would have changed things and like how I would have maybe wanted to see it, and the idea that I came up with in my head was I I would have rather seen like a tug of war between the ghost faces, like two separate ghost faces, mm. and, and like one trying to follow like the slash the older slasher mm. format. Versus like the new gritty ghost face like who that. is like I'm who's like more unhinged and just like doesn't play by the rules and them trying to like and then you can have like the the and like, we've seen ghost faces turn on each other at the end once they do the reveal anyway it's like yeah it's both of us it's one of us yeah sort of like thing. right like so like a ghost face versus ghost face uh, ghost face off both hunting. The yeah. kids trying to get to them first, or whatever, or just trying that to happens like a little bit, but they, but they and like it, dispel that very quickly, right? And and like it would have worked too because these movies are so much about the movies, yeah. like because of the stab franchise and all that. And I think that it just would have worked where it would have told told the story of like where horror movies are now in twenty twenty three. Versus like the nostalgia play of the old school slashers. I think that right now the series is unfortunately kind of lost. It's like a sports, and I liked the last one. And it's like a it's sports rebuilding. Team, yeah, it's like a sports team you like. They lose one game, and suddenly you're just like freaking out about everything, and you're like, "Wait, how did it get this bad this quickly? Is it really this bad, or am I overreacting?" And I think the franchise is just like it's throwing together partial connections, like an illegitimate child of Billy or like mm-hmm. Gail's dude. trying to get back in the game. And it's like, the what Billy are any of these? The stop, Billy thing is dude. horrible. The stop. Billy thing was very, very they do terrible. The, they do ghost Billy like so much in yeah. this movie. And it was, it was a little much in scream five and they do it twice as much in this. And I can't, you can't tell like, is this a red herring or is it something they're actually not going to finish? It was really, really awkward. I, I was just deep, deep, deep douche chills. But so they have all these like sort of like partial connections that can be made with the audience. And they're trying to make these new kids the lifeblood. But there's not really any sort of home base. It, it's Jenna Ortega, the Terra character, mm-hmm. just because she seems like a good actress. And no offense, I, I don't think the person who plays Sam is great. And I don't like the Sam character. I don't think the audience is supposed to like the Sam character. I, I, I don't feel good about the core group. The Chad characters, okay, but I don't know if there is a a real centerpiece other than just like 
Jenna Ortega's cool. We want to see a Jenna Ortega movie? I think Chad and her sis and his sister, they have a good dynamic and they provide a lot of comic relief mm-hmm. um, where it's necessary. And like that that's what you need. Mm-hmm. So they're they're strong. Uh another thing is that uh this movie has uh my guy Dermot Bones Mulrones, mm-hmm. aka Dermot Mulroney. And uh, brings no joy to say he he's is. So he turns in a very bad performance. He's so bad, and like I like the worst. I rarely ever am like that guy was. That person was bad. Distracting. Like I don't. People are. I, people are always are always like this person's a good actor. This person's a bad actor. I feel like I don't notice bad acting. Same usually. If if and if, I forget if, it. if I yeah right and if I notice especially in like a scream movie I'm like ah oh, whatever yeah he was terrible he was distracting where I was like are they trying to tell me like he's the kill like oh well, what's what's going on with everything that he's doing yeah. there's a scene uh, my theater appropriately as they it should have laughed where they come across. Uh, a bunch of artifacts from the past, mm-hmm. stuff that'll really rattle them, mm-hmm. and they're all observing it, and uh, it's like chilling, and they're saying, "Oh, this is this, and this is oh, this is where this came from." Blah, blah, blah. And he says, "You've all been through so much," and that's the end of his line. <laughs> but like, they leave like three seconds of silence, and the the whole theater was like, <laughs> "What?" <laughs> Like, the line was just supposed to be like, man, you've all been through so much. But he just, like, it's like he's starting a line and doesn't finish it. And then the movie makes fun of him for it. <laughs> it is so fucking weird. He was not good. Uh, no. Good to see uh, Good to see Hayden Panettiere back, though. Love oh, like Liked the, the Kirby character. Uh, glad that, this may contain uh, Scream 4 spoilers, glad that uh, she did not die mm-hmm. at the hands of uh, Rory. Uh, Rory. Well, Rory is his real name. Yes, Rory, Rory Culkin. Culkin. Yeah, yeah. Um, but she. I mean, she was a good character for it anyway. She was. She's as long as she's there, you'll wonder like, could she have done it? Because in Scream Four, she's the horror movie buff, and they mm-hmm. remind you in this that she's the horror movie buff. She's a survivor of this, and they also remind you that the legacy characters are now expendable. Yes, yes. I mean, this won't contain any spoilers, but when they said that Hayden Panettiere was going to be back in this as Kirby. I was like, well, I know who our first suspect is. <laughs> yeah. It could for sure be this. I will say though, like we're we're not getting into spoilers, but the reveal is oh, so bad. Very, very bad. It's so bad. And like I, I wasn't the biggest fan of the the movie up into the reveal, but once the reveal happened, I was like, You've gotta be kidding me. Yeah, yeah. Uh and although there is one cool part I do have to shout out. Which one? And this this will be a kind of spoiler, but there's always there's always two ghost faces. Uh, but at one point the two ghost faces except for meet one up. time, Scream Two. Yes, that's right. Uh, no, Scream Three when it was her. It's making oh right, Scream Three. Correct, uh, correct, spo- yeah, yeah. It, it was the guy from Scrubs. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> make contain Scrub spoilers, but uh, there is a point at which uh, two ghost faces simultaneously oh that part rocked yeah that part i was like rocked. we're back yeah there was a th- that was so sick yeah and there was a like a side by side two ghost face and they both do the the knife wipe at the same time and it was so cool and they, i mean best sound at the oscars next year should be scream because they they always have the shh when that yeah. happens but they like juiced it they yeah. were like turn oh, that yeah. up really loud that i'm glad you mentioned that because i would have been upset if i didn't that it was I got I was had like a couple of Twitter conversations about the movie after I had seen it and um like I, I you know I, I don't want it to to make it seem like the movie I thought everything was it's bad it's not unwatchable no it's not unwatchable and it's not I wouldn't even say it's like I wouldn't even say it's terrible it's it's bad it, I, it's, I'd say for, for a screen movie I consider it bad because I consider some of the screen movies like borderline like uh, four slashers like I, I scream one fucking rocks i love yeah. scream four scream two is really i'm good. i'm i think that it was this was hurt a little bit by you convincing me to watch scream four the night before because scream four was so good yeah and we were like let's catch up on kirby yeah. let's like i, I wanted to, to make sure i knew everything i needed to know about kirby going in. yeah and instead i just came away from it being like 
What a movie. <laughs> and and I and I did like Scream Five. I thought that Same. Scream Five was very. It, it gave a lot of new life to the franchise. Obviously, introduced a lot of new characters who I was interested in. And I'm not like I'm not out, but I this was disappointing based on what we got in Scream Five. I thought. Yeah, I would consider. I I hate that I now have to rewatch Scream Three, which was previously my least favorite, because I want to determine was this the worst scream movie or was this the second worst scream movie mm. ultimately i feel like it's got to be the it's it's you i feel like you want the scream movies to be able to stand alone and live on their own like obviously you're gonna have the the sydney prescott yeah. and gail dynamic and stuff but like i feel like you can parachute in to most of them this one it just makes such a big deal about like oh yeah they- you're right you you are right we're like uh, unlike any of the other ones you're not like fuck oh well, i don't get any of this yeah like i've seen all the other ones and i was like was richie more of something than i'm remembering right this- they make such a big deal of richie and they make such a big deal about like the franchise as a whole and like it's some of it's cool like the 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 shrine to yeah. like the history of ghostface and stuff that stuff's cool but it doesn't it doesn't serve enough of a purpose i think in the end and also it makes it less accessible yeah to parachute in on pros uh jenna ortega by the hype uh i like that they're hunting ghostface as much as ghostface is hunting them nice to see kirby back it kind of ends there though like Ch- chad seems like a nice kid <laughs> but like if that's what you're if that's what's high on your list of pros for a movie then it's not a great movie they introduce a cute boyfriend or cute boy oh, or cute he, neighbor yeah oh they they objectify the hell out of this but guy. that i like that guy that guy's cool i definitely i was like but it's what's cool though is in recent uh in recent ones because scream five did this where they were like yeah, it's the person you obviously thought it was. Duh. And I, I I don't mind that move. In this, with that guy, I was like, there's no way it's going to be. Like, that would be so, yeah. so, 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 so obvious. But I like that they have gone super obvious before, so now you can't rule anything out. Uh, yeah. All right, that is Scream 6. Just uh, not the worst movie. Hope the next one's better.